Now, India tells Canada to withdraw dozens of diplomatic staff. Ottawa has been told by New Delhi that it must repatriate roughly 40 diplomats by October 10th, according to people familiar with the demand. This is the big breaking news coming in as far as the entire tussle between India and Canada is concerned. Now, India, in a stern word, to Canada has told them to withdraw dozens of diplomatic staff. Ottawa has been told by New Delhi that it must repatriate roughly 40 diplomats by October 10th, October 10 of this month, according to people familiar with the demand. Now, this is the big breaking news coming in about the entire tussle between India and Canada. This is a big move made by the central government. To give us more details about that, we have CNN News 18's Abhishek Jha joining, me, uh, joining us on the phone line. Abhishek, could you walk us through the latest development that we are breaking for our viewers? Uh, well, on the issue of uh, you know diplomats, there has been some uh, movement, it seems, because India has asked for Canadian government to have a parity on rank and strength. Uh, among the diplomats and it seems ever since that uh, fallout of diplomatic fallout between the two sides uh, Indian number of Indian diplomats in Canada is pretty less than what Canadian diplomats uh, number of Canadian diplomats are deputed in Delhi uh, in uh, you know various missions in, across India so uh, that is something that India has demanded in the wake of uh, the diplomatic uh, face-off between uh, the two sides and it seems that very soon uh, many of the diplomats from the Canadian mission will have to pack up and leave for their own country. So that's a big move that has come in from central government, Abhishek. How do you think it is going to affect India and Canada's ties now? Well, uh, you know, a lot of Indian students who go to Canada uh, and, uh, you know, there are, there are thousands, uh, hundreds and thousands of people who every year wish to go to Canada. So, like, there is an entire process of, uh, you know, those applications or visa applications or PR applications from India, which is processed by the Canadian High Commissioner and its various missions across India. So, Maybe those stuff, they, it will get some impact. Also, like there are three layers of staff which are uh, deputed in a uh, high commission or any, any uh, embassy. Uh, first is, of course, the diplomats who have the diplomatic immunity. Second is the official passport holder. So, uh, who are the people actually responsible for a lot of office work and documentation. And the third category is the locally recruited staff, uh, which is uh, taken from or recruited from the host country. So what India has asked that the strength and parity will be applied at the level of diplomats who have diplomatic immunity and they are like pretty senior and they are like the civil servants from the other country. Uh, so the number of these uh, people or these officials uh, will be reduced while the office staff or people who have been holding white uh, official passport, uh, that is going to remain almost the same because India has at least not asked for them to go back. Uh, and the number of local recruits, recruits is something that the Canadian embassies uh, or the high commissions across the country will take a call uh, how many of people they will continue to be with and whether there will be some uh, laying off as well because of the reduction uh, in, the, in the work. Uh, and that will also depend on how long this entire diplomatic standoff will continue, whether Canadian and Indian uh, bilateral relationship will continue to go down uh, because it will have some, uh, you know, bearing on the number of people or number of students, business person who every year go to Canada on, uh, from Canadian side, we have already seen India has issued it an advisory and it has stopped processing any visa application from the Canadian citizen who wish to come to India. So, right. it's, it's a huge thing that is going on between the two sides and uh, now the diplomatic stand of is taking its toll on the people to people engagement as well. Right, Abhishek, what can be seen as a big blow to uh, Canadian diplomatic staff uh, residing here in India? They have been told to pack up and, you know, leave for their country. What do you think is going to be U.S.'s stand here now? Well, uh, U.S. Uh, is an uh, ally to Canada. U.S. is a good friend to India. And uh, he, it, it, U.S. has been very uh, actively engaged and frequently engaged with the Indian side also on the issue. Also, it has been, uh, you know, siding along with Canada in, uh, to some extent when it says that the allegation leveled by the Canadian side is very grave in nature and that needs a thorough investigation and India should cooperate on that. So, uh, U.S. is trying to balance its cards uh, between the two allies or between the two good friends. Uh, but at the same time, it, it, uh, I mean, U.S. doesn't have any locus of standby on number of people that India has asked Canadian authorities to reduce a uh, number of diplomats uh, from the Indian side. Uh, it may, however... To see all the events unfolding between the two sides with a very cautious approach uh, because if the number of diplomats who go back to Canada continues 
to be like that it's going to really uh, have an impact on the india canada bilateral relationship be it in terms of economic engagement people to people engagement cultural engagement or other areas of cooperation that the two sides the were going to be setting do we have any word coming in from canadian side as well abhishek so far well they have, i mean they they are they are bound to follow the the normal obligation of parity in rank and strength uh, between the two sides normally it happens that uh, it is normal trusted partners they have an understanding that okay you have lot of work in india so probably you will need more uh, people or more diplomats to be deputed in in the various missions across india so in that case it's, it's just understanding uh, unset uh, trust between the two sides which allows number of people uh to keep rising or not having as you know in, in terms of parity but when the trust deficit is very much there then the two sides uh, fall back on the real uh, obligations or the vienna convention is involved between the two sides and this is where india has asked the canadian side to uh, have a parity and uh, call back extra number of diplomats uh, uh, we believe about 30 uh, diplomats of indian are deployed in various missions in canada uh, and more than double of that canadian diplomats were deployed in india so in a way 30 to 40 diplomats uh, approximately from the canadian side will have to go back to canada uh, to keep the number at parity uh, with what number of indian diplomats are uh, presently in canada abhishek since we are talking about withdrawal of dozens of diplomatic staff here from new delhi back to canada how are the business deals and the other deals that are currently underway between india and canada going to be affected from this well it seems that canadian government had factored in some of the implication uh, that it will have uh, if justin trudeau would stand in the floor of the parliament and allege those serious allegations uh, on the indian agency's role in the killing of pardeep singh either because uh, about week before justin trudeau's announcement canada has uh, put a pause button on the free trade agreement that was being negotiated between the two sides that would have allowed uh, you know smooth uh, you know to uh, transaction of goods and services between the two sides so something uh, was already in the mind of the canadian government before uh, they stood and they started leveling those uh, serious allegations against india uh, so probably that that economic impact was very well factored in by the canadian side uh, we also know that uh, when india has asked number of diplomats to go back from the canadian side they also know that it is going to have some impact some bearing on the people to people engagement but uh, probably they are also ready for that because the kind of uh, allegations that the canadian government has uh, leveled against india which is kind of unprecedented between the two strategic allies because india can and share that type of relationship as well on the on the on theoretically uh, and if you have a strategic ally relationship and then you kind of level those allegations that you are interfering in our uh, internal affairs and uh, you are not treating the terrorists of one uh, ally to uh, and uh, you you call them a freedom of uh, freedom fighter or freedom of expression and all uh, that is something that india has uh, stopped accepting and it is going to go ahead full throttle in in keeping uh, under check all the khalistani terrorists uh, in canada or in other parts of the world also wherever they are be it on, on the uh, soils of any friend or ally or any partner countries of india and this is what we have seen in the last uh, you know one week or so abhishek uh, we want to understand from you as far as us stand is concerned they have uh, been continuously reiterating on the same point that you know india should be cooperating with the canadian investigation do you think that this move that has been made by new delhi towards ottawa can be seen as a stern response to the west as well uh i mean one can see this uh, with, with multiple meanings because uh, when the canadian high commission in delhi was called by ministry of external affairs and uh, they lodged their strong protest uh during those time only india had asked for the canadian side to ensure that the rank and parity uh, you know uh, rank and strength parity is maintained between the diplomats and that was the kind of message that if you are messing up with us then we are going to go ahead with all you know all all of our uh, options and this is what one option is india has also issued an advisory so now uh, you know uh, whether this step will sour the relationship between the two sides or not that concept or that thinking has been left behind pretty much and now india is here to counter what allegations canadian side has given without any substantial proof so far in, uh, it's been almost 10 days and we haven't seen any substantial documents or evidence that has been produced by the canadian side to to delhi or for that matter to any other countries india and uh, indian external affairs minister jashankar has also said that if we are given uh, any document or any intelligence input probably we'll look into it and then then the issue of cooperation will come but with a kind of allegations and then uh, uh, an eerie silence from the canadian side 
this is just uh, looks like a political compulsion that the Canadian government was going ahead with. And uh, now that political compulsion, domestic political compulsion is having a serious impact on the bilateral relationship and Delhi is in no mood uh, to, to take it lying low or uh, lying now. And uh, we have seen all the, uh, you know, you know, serious measures that Delhi has taken uh, in, in terms of diplomatic, uh, you know, calling, uh, asking the diplomats to go back, issuing advisory, uh, calling the number of diplomats to be reduced. Uh, and, and this is all something uh, is not very good for that bilateral relationship. But then uh, this is how it has unfolded in the last 10 days. Right, Abhishek, we'll request you to please stay with us because we have another major piece of breaking news coming in. At